St. Paul had just established a Christian community at Corinth. And immediately he walked out of that community, he went away to establish other communities elsewhere. He hears the reports, and the reports that are, that are coming, that are reaching him, are not so good. People have forgotten about the word of God. They've involved themselves in a life that, that does not uh, give the character of a Christian community. St. Paul is disappointed. In fact, he's more than disappointed. He is angry. He's upset. He's annoyed with the community. Because he left with them everything that they needed for them to be a good community, a Christian community. But then, a few characters in that community have brought confusion and everybody is influenced towards that direction. And therefore, he decides to write them his first letter. And that is why we have in the, in the, in the New Testament, in the Bible, the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And this is what we, we read today. He decides to write them this first letter so that he reminds them about what is, uh, what is proper for a Christian community. What reflects a character of a Christian community. In this letter, and particularly what we read today, St. Paul points out the things that he hears are happening in that community. Talks about immorality, talks about um, people going back to, to pagan gods. He talks about uh, people uh, marrying inappropriately, you know, a son taking the wife of his father. Yeah. So, a son marrying his own mother, in short. Yeah. And this is, this is not supposed to be happening in a Christian community like this. There are so many other things, arrogance, etc., etc. And so he writes this very strong letter to them, challenging them about uh, the kind of lifestyle that they have. This is not the Christian community that he established. The, the route that they have taken is completely uh, the opposite. Maybe he is not just writing to this community at Corinth. He also is also writing to us. Certainly, all of us here uh, gathered in this, um, in this uh, our small church, in the studio, and those following us on TV and social media, all of us are Christians. And being Christians, there are certain things that we need to abide by for us to have the character of a Christian. But maybe we have strayed from those. And when Paul is writing this letter to the Corinthians, the message is also coming directly to us. It is a call to self-introspection. What are the things that uh, I have incorporated in my life that do not give me the character of a Christian? What are those things that have destroyed my relationship with God? If I go back to my baptism, at that baptism, I promised God something. I said I was going to live this type, of, this type of, of life. But then what I have today probably is the opposite of what I promised. So when we listen to this strong letter that Paul writes to the Corinthians, we should put ourselves in the shoes of the Corinthians themselves. They are the primary uh, recipients of the letter. But when we put ourselves in their, in their shoes, we also become the primary recipients of the same letter. Paul is talking to us as well and is calling us to self-introspection as a community but also as individual Christians. Am I on the right track or I am, slowly, I am slowly falling off? Am I following the things that should help me to be a good Christian or I have uh, just taken off uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an opposite direction? Am I a good Christian or I am not. In the gospel, Jesus is um, having a conversation over the issue of the Sabbath with the, with the Jews. This is a very important law for the Jews, and it has to be followed to the latter. And they have a, a, a list of things that should be done and should not be done on the Sabbath. What does Jesus do? He comes and overturns that list. He comes and uh, 
it does what, what according to the community is not supposed to be done on the Sabbath. And so he's asking them a question. Tell me, is it, is it proper, is it good to do, to do good on the Sabbath or to do harm? Jesus has healed a man with a withered, withered hand. And according to the people, he's not supposed to do that since that is the, the, is the Sabbath. So if this man should die today on the Sabbath with a withered, withered hand, it's better that way than to have him re restored or healed by Jesus on this day. This man is supposed to wait for tomorrow or the day after tomorrow before he gets healed. Many times we become slaves of the law. God did not give us the law or the commandments so that, they, so that we are enslaved by the laws. But the laws are supposed to help us get even closer to God himself. They're supposed to help us to save one another. But when we begin to follow or obey the law in the manner that the Jews are following it, then we become slaves of the same law. And this is what Jesus is overturning. He wants us to understand that the law of the Sabbath and indeed many other laws that we're supposed to follow as Christians should not enslave us, but they should save us. They should help us to live a proper life, to live uh, in the service of one another. If it is the Sabbath and there is, there is a particular uh, good action that needs to be done, I should go ahead and do that because the law is supposed to help me to save the people, the person that I have in front of me. But if I have to wait until tomorrow, tomorrow might not uh, be my day. I might, I might come to regret and say, I, I wish I had done this yesterday. But then I was following this law literally and to the latter. And therefore, I missed out uh, on the opportunity of doing something good for another person. Many times we become slaves of the law. But today, Jesus wants us to understand that the law is supposed to save us and not us saving the law. Even the civil laws that we, that we make for ourselves in our organization of society, these laws are not supposed to enslave us. They should help us have harmony in our society. They should help us have a, a society where everybody is going to, to, to have the, the, the kind of life that they, they always desire. But when we begin to make laws for ourselves, such that these laws enslave us, become a cross that we have to carry day in, day out, then that law, then those laws are bad laws. And Jesus is saying, get rid of those laws, or at least change your attitude towards the same laws. Jesus is not kicking out the law of the Sabbath, but he's trying to help the people uh, know how to observe this same law, such that it should not become a cross that they have to carry, but it should, should aid them to be even closer to, to God, to Christ himself, but also it should help them to save one another. The same way that Jesus has, has saved this person with a withered hand. We pray for ourselves that uh, we try to incorporate in our life, in our Christian life, first of all, the, the counsel that we get from St. Paul as he writes to the Corinthians that have lost the Christian character of the community. But we also pray for ourselves that uh, we may change our attitude towards the law, whether it is civil law or religious law, so that these laws begin to save us and not, not us saving, saving them. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,